This virtual festival has been organized by Youth Celebrate Diversity, and the festival is proudly sponsored by Boeing. Hi. Hi again. Um, so if you weren't here earlier, I'm Rohan Budanti, and I am a junior at Smoke Hill High School in Aurora, Colorado. I'm Sophia. I'm a sophomore at Albuquerque School of Excellence in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, so it looks like we're waiting on Kinette. So while we're waiting on her, I'll just describe who Kinette is. Um, so today on this segment, we will have Kinette Richards. Um, she's currently a school psychologist at Prairie Middle School in the Cherry Creek School District, which is in Colorado. Um, Kinette has done a lot, not only for mental health services, but also equitable access to mental health care. Um, in December of 2019, Kinette won the Colorado School of Society, the Colorado Society of School Psychologists School Psychologist of the Year Award, and was also given the award Supervisor of the Year by the University of Denver for her work with college students. She also serves on the adult board of Youth Celebrate Diversity. All right, and for our um, segment today, we are going to have submissions from high school students about talking about how COVID affected their lives, um, mainly from Colorado. And we're going to be discussing these submissions with Kinette um, to get a professional opinion from someone who works in the mental field, mental health field. Um, so if the tech team is video one ready, um, we can we can do them out of order actually. We can start with number three, that's fine. We uh, gathered a list of questions that we submitted to um, our friends and asked them to make a short two, one to two minute video discussing some of these questions that we're gonna be reviewing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we gave them questions that are like, how has mental health impacted you during this time? What are some ways you coped? All of that sort of stuff. Hey, my um, name is Kanina Shahid, and go. I am a junior at Smoky Hill High School. And I have to say that in March, when, you know, coronavirus was slowly getting worse and worse, I wasn't, you know... Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. My name is Devin Batten. I'm in 10th grade and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm going to answer two questions. The first being, how has your headspace changed from before quarantine to now? And to answer that, I'd say before quarantine, I didn't appreciate going out and running errands with my parents. Now I see it as a good way of getting out the house and it also helps them out. The second question is, do you have any coping strategies you'd like to share that keep you afloat during these times? And I'd answer that with some strategies that I use are going to the gym to work out and spending time with my family. Those are my answers to the questions. And remember, if you're struggling with your mental health, make sure to reach out. All right, so that was the first video. And I believe Devin lives in Las Vegas, right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's just interesting how similar these experiences are, even though it's from a completely different state. Can you hear me OK? Uh, and with yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just double checking. Hear you. <laughs> I've heard a lot about working out as sort of a way to release um, stress, um, it induces the serotonin hormone that is basically the happy hormone. So, um, yeah, would you like to clarify on that a little bit? Sure. Um, first, thanks for having me. Um, Jeanette Richards, she, her pronouns. And um, I also love uh, you celebrate diversity, so I'm really happy to be part of this event with you all today. So one of the things that we know for sure, there's a couple of things that you both raised. Rohan, you raised the issue of how, wow, that seems really similar, even though this person is in Las Vegas. We know that there's some universal impacts from COVID, particularly um, when we think about the pandemic, we know that some universal impacts have happened, not only for young people, but also for adults. 
And even if we think about kids younger than yourselves, there have been some universal impacts across the country. And so that's why that story can resonate with students no matter where they are, youth no matter where they are. Um, and a coping skill that's really critical is exercise because it does reduce, release, I'm sorry, this what we call feel good hormone. It really helps your brain to be able to re-energize in a time when it may feel really flat or really down. And so the use of exercise is a really natural endorphin producer and really does help young people and adults as well to help manage some of the isolation and some of the potential depressive symptoms that you might feel during this time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think it is. <laughs> I think something that really helps me has been exercise. Um, like I, I've always been running, well I've been running for two years, but I also got into biking over the summer and that was really nice because I got to be with my family and see all the views. Um, so I definitely could relate to him. Was there anything you could relate to Sophie? Uh, mostly uh, about appreciating the family time. Um, I feel like that's very critical now since we are all in lockdown and maybe you cannot see your relatives who even live across town from you. So even if it's just like over a Zoom call or FaceTime, I feel it's very important to stay connected. Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, I do think for me personally, it has been nice to have my family around. I know for not, not for everyone is that a good thing, but um, I really do appreciate my family because I feel like they're always supportive and can help me through some rough times. Um, does anyone else have anything else to add to this uh, video? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to add in, in response to what uh, you said, as well as the young person in the video, one of the things that we know it can happen is the family relationship can go either way. It can strengthen those bonds or it can make things a little more difficult depending on what was already pre-existing in the relationship. But I love how he said just going to the store was something that he probably never would do or never think about. But wow, now this added a time for him to be able to get out and it also added some family time. So it ends up kind of strengthening the bonds for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grocery <laughs> shopping could be such a great thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen a lot of people talk about it. Even I can relate that. I used to sort of just be like, I don't want to go to the store. That's boring. But now it's kind of your only option to go out sometime. Right. <laughs> it's kind of like an escape. I think we're ready to move on to the second video. Or Well, it'll yeah. be number five in the folder. Um, so I'm going to talk about my mental health across the pandemic. I mainly want to focus on like the two things that I think really hit me the most. Um, the first one being that I experienced the first major death, um, in my family during this pandemic. My grandpa was diagnosed with brain cancer and he didn't die of COVID, which to me is almost a miracle. Um, even though he did pass away, uh, and that was really difficult for me processing his death because it is the first one that I've had to deal with um, in my family. And he was really close to me. Um, and like, I was not allowed to do the things that people are normally allowed to do to grieve. I could not lean on my family members or people for support because they were in Oregon and there was all of those travel issues going on. And also like people like my grandma are very high risk um with all of their health issues as well so it made it impossible to lean on the people who would understand what i was going through uh and like they were not the oh uh, <laughs> well i'm not sure if um the video will come back but basically what came and finished by saying was that they weren't um the best with technology so it was hard to communicate um and i I think she said something else. I think she might have talked about um, school and how she feels really angry right now um, because what ended up happening is she feels like she's been deprived of an education. Um, so the way it's been working in our district is what we've been doing is a hybrid model where we go to school for two days in person and then we go virtual for three days. And I know for a lot of people actually, it's been hard to find motivation and 
and really um, buckle down and do their work. Um, and so she said she just felt really angry that she kind of had been deprived of you know what she had before and she felt like she wasn't learning as much. Um, and I can definitely relate to that because I mean, I've always been a good student. I think I've always been pretty successful, but it's been so weird because it's sort of like a double-edged sword online school because you can do things at your own pace, which is nice, but then also you can get distracted so, so easily. Um, like you can be like, ooh, the TV's right there. Let me, let me watch some TV or something like that. And I think because of that, I've not been as productive as I always have been. And like how her grandparents and like how she can't not lean on her family members after her grandpa's death. I feel like that's one of the things that Kinnett mentioned as because this quarantine could be their like make or break bonds. And um, since they were separated and not good with technology, it's kind of breaking their bond. And I was wondering if Kinnett had any thoughts on how to um, basically start building up your bond again with um, people that you lost touch with or any of that? Yeah, I think there's a really important point that was addressed in that last video. It's unfortunate that the very end got cut off. Actually, there's a couple of really important points. But the one that you just raised about how do we rebuild bonds is a critical issue. But I want to back up just a quick second before I get to that and say that one of the things that's happened in COVID, and for this young person, it's really important to note, this is the first major loss in her life to lose a grandparent, but it's not a COVID death. So this is a grandparent who had a pre-existing condition, didn't even contract COVID, but still died. And because of the kinds of restrictions that COVID have put in place, it really impacts the rituals that families have around death. And it also impacts the relationships and ability to lean on people. How does a young person navigate that space when they can't even participate in typical rituals? And so one thing that's been happening is memorial services after some time so that there's closure for the family, but there's also a way to reconnect around the person that's been lost. So it's a way to memorialize their life. And that a lot of families are doing that via a Zoom or video kind of a platform where everyone connects. Um, some people maybe bring a momentum that they have. Sometimes people might have a toast of some sort, but some way to connect in this, in this virtual space so we can still talk about the loss that we had. And so a young person with a first loss can really lean on those people in that space in order to do that. Another thing that's been really helpful for a lot of young people is to write a letter to your loved one because you didn't have a chance to be there. And it's a way to sort of say goodbye, even though that person may not be there to physically receive it. It is a really nice way to have a tangible way that I've written down my thoughts and the things I'm gonna miss about you, the things I really appreciate about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, those are some really smart techniques. And ones actually I wish I had too because um, even though my first loss, which was in September of last year, was not during coronavirus, I can sort of relate to not being able to grieve properly because uh, my grandparent, my grandpa specifically, he died in India um, and I could not go. So he was over the pond and I, I couldn't talk to him at all. Um, and I, I wasn't there for the funeral rites or any of that. So I couldn't really grieve properly or get to see him or talk to him one last time. So I can also totally relate. And I think that's sort of a lot of people's experience now. Mm -hmm. um, coronavirus, yeah. Um, and do you think there's um, sort of a pattern of people being frustrated with school now, Kinnett, because of kind of like this online or hybrid model that a lot of people have been doing? Yes, I actually think this has some pros and cons. It does allow you to be in the space where you get to see people and you can connect to people even though it still requires the social distancing. But one of the things that happens is typically when you go into summer vacation, your brain sort of goes on summer vacation. You're like, okay, I'm done with school. And when I start up, I'm gonna be a freshman or a sophomore or a junior or a senior. And your brain then begins to wire and your thinking begins to wire around what that grade level requires. 
Well, in this particular model, what you have is essentially two days of school and almost a five day weekend because you're not at school. You don't have to necessarily have the same routines. And depending on what school is doing during that time, if most of that stuff is asynchronous and there's a teacher on the video, you could access that material at two o'clock. So young people really have to try hard to stay in a routine of going to bed at a reasonable time, to get up at a reasonable time. Otherwise you go to bed late, you sleep in late, and then your circadian rhythm is off and your ability to bring your best effort to it. And so that whole process just makes people angry. And many students I hear just saying, can we just go back to school? This just two day thing and five days out is, it's nice, but it's not anything. And, and, and it's too easy to slip back into the patterns that they had during the summer. Um, and so you really have to almost write down a schedule for yourself and say, I gotta get up at this time and which subject I'm going to do and make sure it's done. Because you also don't wanna be on a, on a platform all day because that's not good for your brain either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually, it's funny because a lot of my teachers have actually said the same thing, which is like, you should try and keep a routine. And I was like, really? Will that help? But I think that makes a lot of sense that like, you know, you're sort of rewiring your brain to not associate, um, you know, like your home with laziness, which is, right. I'm not sure we'll get the chance to watch it because of technical difficulties. But one of the other videos actually to talk about, um, he was having trouble with online school because he associates the home with relaxation. <laughs> and I think a lot of people can sort of uh, um, relate to that. I think especially because in a lot of schools, fourth quarter, you didn't have to do the work. It was a whole harmless policy. Mm -hmm. But now that the stakes are much higher, I think uh, it's it's a lot harder to sort of force yourself to do work again, especially if yes. you <laughs> took fourth quarter off. I think that's a really good point, Rohan, because the whole harmless policy almost made people not give full effort. And so they spent the last half of whatever that school year they were in not really putting forth full effort. And in some ways, their brain and their thinking is, it's still hold harmless. But now educators are going, no, you've got to do the work. Why aren't you producing? And these are your grades. Particularly, I think, if you are a senior this year, it's really a critical year. You are practicing a lot of self-monitoring. And honestly, you're going to need that really a lot when you start a college path or even a career path if you're not going to college, because you have to be able to be motivated to go to bed, to get up, to get to work, you know, to learn whatever the tasks are. And if you're in college, same thing. I've got to know when my classes are, what work is needed, and how do I plan this week so that I can make sure everything is checked off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any tips or suggestions on how students can utilize um, like their schedules or how they can make sure um, they don't fall behind during these times? Yeah, so you know, when um, I was young a thousand years ago, I would say something like, write that down and stick it on your refrigerator. But now I would say, use this little device that you're always have in your hand, set a timer on there, put some notes in there. You can have an alarm go off for you so that it's reminding you because you're already in the habit of looking at your phone a lot and checking a text message. So if you have an alarm go off in your phone and it has a note attached to it that simply says math time or uh, take a break time because you can't, if you're sitting down too long, that's actually not physiologically good for you, even as young people. You might have an alarm that says, take a five minute walk, go go around the, if you're in an apartment, get up from this room, go out to the main room and come back three times. Or if you're in a house, go outside to the mailbox and come back. It's something so that you're moving because that also helps you to re-energize. So I would say use whatever device you have so that it gives you some notice. But you can also put sticky notes on the refrigerator because you need a snack in between. So that also helps. <laughs> yeah, I, I was always like, because I cannot just sit for an entire sitting of like four or five hours and do my work. Yeah. And I'm always like, how can people do that? So it's good to know, you know, I'm not <laughs> alone on that. Um, okay, so that was a really good conversation. And we have one more video that we're gonna show uh, today. It's video number three for the tech people. 
Um, and I think it was actually playing before and then got cut off. So let's let's watch that now. Hi, my name is Khadija Shahid and I am a junior at Smoky Hill High School. And I have to say that in March when, you know, coronavirus was slowly getting worse and worse, I wasn't, you know, schools closing wasn't really the first thing on my mind. I did see everything getting canceled slowly um, around us. But I honestly, I didn't think schools would actually close. Like I heard, you know, whispers that after spring break, um, we wouldn't be coming back. Um, and I didn't actually believe it because I was having a hard time um, getting used to the idea of a pandemic um, as it was. And, you know, I never thought that it would, you know, actually influence me because for so long, like the media said that it was something that was overseas in other countries um, mm -hmm. and not really um, in America. You know, it was, you heard of the occasional like one to two cases in your city um, and it kind of made you go on edge, but you know, it didn't really affect you as much. Um, but then all of a sudden when schools closed, I was just kind of in shock because, mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said, I didn't think it would actually affect me. Um, and at first it felt great. You know, I was stressed out about school, I was stressed out about everything and the pandemic just gave me time to just relax and, you know, just do whatever I wanted. But then slowly I started getting, you know, that cabin fever, not getting to go outside, losing my routine, my schedule, everything, my whole life. Um, so I really turned in um, to doing hobbies like art and just things like that, like creating things, um, which is something that really helped me. Um, I had always liked art, but I had finally gotten the excuse to, um, you know, tap into that uh, hobby a little bit more and increase those skills. And it's still something that I do today. Um, after a while, you know, now that school has started, it, I'm still having issues with everything because I feel like um, even from before, the pandemic and everything that happened, there was a lot of negative um, media and it only got worse as um, the pandemic in 2020 started. So that was something really hard and I found myself just avoiding everything that was stressing me out as a coping mechanism and now that's kind of turned into something unhealthy for me because every time something stresses me out I just kind of try to avoid it and avoid all those negative feelings. So that is something I'm trying to work on. I am trying to keep a positive outlook on everything because um, positivity is what's going to get us through it all um, and I'm hopeful for the future as long as we all work together and realize that we're all in this together. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I think the first thing that really stood out to me is kind of when she said she was in denial uh, that anything would happen. I think that's the way a lot of people were when it first happened because um, so many things got canceled and so many things that I think people cared about. Like mm -hmm. one of my earliest memories is that my friend was gonna go to Chicago uh, towards spring break really. Um, and then it got canceled and he was so upset and he was like, you know, this is just the flu, why is this happening? I can't believe this is happening. This won't cancel school, things like that. And my first memory of like being in denial was thinking about how this um, COVID was just a virus and how it wouldn't affect people in the front lines, such as like doctors, nurses, even like teachers. But like, as time got by, it got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And it's, I know not only for me, but a lot of my friends and um, my mentors, they are pretty scared right now for themselves and a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, really quickly, I think we need to switch interpreters. Uh, so. Okay. I will wait. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, that's a really nice feature. Um, you know, I, were you going to say something else, Rohan, before I speak? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I think this is a really important issue. So on the first um, end 
Well, like I said, is a, that's an end. I, I like to think about things sort of in bookends. So that was the first end of it, and we're still waiting for the last bookend. Um, when people went into um, a stay-at-home order, you could almost have this false sense that it was not going to last long. And so for our school district, it was the Friday before spring break. So in many ways, it just sort of gave one extra day of spring break. However, once we got in the middle of spring break, if you weren't in conversations with district level people, you didn't know that school really was not gonna come back the next week. And I think one of the things that she raised in her video is, I thought it was just like the flu or I thought it was gonna be short, depending on where you got your news information from and your news source and what you attached to, you had varying opinions and varying thinking about what would happen on the backside of what was happening in that moment. You knew that if you had some travel plans for spring break, those were canceled. You knew that just sort of these other events like maybe a game or a tournament or something like that. But there wasn't a good sense that this was going to last longer. And then, of course, the longer it got, the more angry people got because folks kind of started in this place of denial and then it shifted into now I'm just angry that this has happened. And from there, people also shifted into some sense of sadness potentially or some sense of depression. Um, you know, and I think that over the course of it, it was really hard to say this is really going to last the rest of the school year. And I think about a lot of uh, young people, particularly if they were seniors, in high school and didn't have a, a typical kind of a graduation process, there are a number of youth who don't go on to college. That may be the only graduation they're going to have in their life for quite some time. And what kind of difference that milestone marker is for them knowing that this actually lasted longer than we think. Um, and so I think at this point, of course, people are now beyond sort of denial that this is happening because we're in the, we're in the thick of it. And I know that that second thinking of at what point might we have to go back into another stay at home, because at least now we have the ability to move in and out of spaces more fluidly and how that's helping people. Um, I'm not sure if I directly addressed your question, Rohan, if you had something else you wanted to add to that. Oh, no, I think that's a really good point. And I remember like when everything started, I was like, there's no way this will be longer than a week. And then I was like, I hope it doesn't go into my birthday because my birthday's in April. And I was like, it won't go into my birthday. And then it did. And then I was like, oh, we'll be back in school by August. And I mean, we kind of are, but we kind of aren't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely been this whole thing of a down. I think what I've sort of realized now is that we probably won't be going back to any sort of normal for a while. Mm -hmm. Or I don't even know if we will go back to our previous normal. I don't think we will have, I think we'll have a new normal actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is probably what's going to end up happening. Um, mm -hmm. One question that I saw in the chat that actually intrigued me really quickly was, is there a difference you've seen in how students with disabilities um, are doing like academically and mental health wise? Because I know it's been a struggle mm -hmm. kind of figuring out how ILC and other programs like that will work under these circumstances. Yeah, so let me try to address that kind of quickly. I'm not sure what our time frame is here. Yeah, I, it's a bit 20 minute answer. <laughs> how many minutes do I get for this answer? <laughs> Uh, like one. <laughs> one. So yes, there's a significant difference. And so one of the things that's happening in is for students who have more profound needs, who've had a paraeducator with them in school, had more explicit instruction, they really need that to make the kind of gains that we hope they make. And so we know that for those students in particular, they are going to not have the same um, kind of growth that we typically hope. We're doing everything we can, but really what we're doing is we're trying to partner with families and say, unfortunately, in this pandemic, you have to serve as an, a teacher, a parent, and all of those other roles that you fulfill. And then if I could just speak quickly to students who have some mental health disability, a few things are happening. If you have an anxiety-based mental health concern, this space actually might work better for you, particularly if it's a performance or school-based anxiety. Being at home more, what I've seen is that's helped some of those students manage better. But if you have more of a depression, it doesn't help you as much because being out in the world, coming and going, being in the sun, being around other people actually helps you more. 
And so it's really, it really depends on what the disability is and how that navigation of that disability has looked before the pandemic. And then what do we do to adjust now that we're here? I know that was more than a minute. I tried to hurry. <laughs> um, Kinnette, I cannot thank you enough for coming on. Your perspective wow, it blew me away. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this. And youth keep doing it. You are our future. I'm reminded of a great saying that I once heard where someone told folks like me, we are someone's ancestors and so are you and we all need to behave like it. Mm -hmm. and here's to your good mental health. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye. And as the first video said, if you are struggling with your mental health, please reach out, please get some help. Um, you matter, you are somebody's ancestor. So we mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed our segment. And also remember that usually there should be, if you can't afford mental health resources, there should be ones in your school, like school psychologists like Connect can help. And that's our take on it. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Bye.